Hi, welcome back to Keto Naturopaths on YouTube. And today I wanted to make a brief video on four labs that you should do sooner than later and how they most likely will completely change your life, metabolically speaking. So I'm going to tell you what they are, why they are useful to you, what they will tell you, where to get them, how much they cost. Okay, shall we get started? All right, the four labs that you should get done, I think immediately, and ideally, I think you should get this done four times a year, depending on what your lab numbers are initially. So what are these four labs? Okay then, glad you asked. So it's triglycerides, HDL cholesterol, which is high density lipoprotein. So it's not your whole, what they call lipid panel, it's not your whole cholesterol panel, it's just your HDL, and it's just your triglycerides, and that's fasting by the way, fasting insulin, and fasting glucose, just for tests. You can do this yourself. You can, if you have a good relationship with your doctor, ask for these tests right now. And let me give you a few surprises. All right, so what are they gonna show you? They are gonna help you determine if you're insulin resistant, and that's a big deal, or if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So ordinarily, when we're looking for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and fatty liver is something that is pretty popular in this country and it's getting to be an epidemic. It's uh, a precursor or it's concurrent with uh, the obesity epidemic and the diabetes epidemic. So it's right in there. Um, but usually you would have to get an entire uh, liver panel, liver function test. I'm going to show you a hack to get around that that will be to your benefit. And you're going to want to know how much this is going to cost you Forget about insurance covering this. Just go get this done, okay? So first, this is it. Let's let's talk about these are the four tests: triglycerides, HDL, glucose, insulin, fasting. All four are fasting. So I used Ulta Labs. You don't have to use Ulta Labs. This is what I use for all our programs. So if I have a a client from Washington, obviously I'm in North Carolina. It's not going to be the same state. So they will. I will tell the patient, these are the labs I want you to get, and we do pretty extensive labs, so this is a very skinny form, but I'll tell them the labs that I want them to get via uh, Ulta Labs. I'll send them a lab requisition, it's called the list of the labs, and then we'll find out where is the nearest blood draw center or patient center for them to get it done. Pretty straightforward. So uh, we'll get into the where last but so this is what i use you don't have to use ulta lab if you if you go to quest and you can get that done at quest fine or LabCorp, and there's other online uh, facilities to do this so this is not unique this is just who i've been using over the last few years i've come to trust them i know their system i know who to call if there's an issue but these are the labs these four labs this is the cost of these labs so the whole bill is 26 dollars depending on you and where you live, sometimes you can even have a phlebotomist come to you and draw your blood in your home. That will probably cost you something, but uh, when we go on and we look to where this is, you'll see there may or may not be an extra blood draw cost. Usually there's not. Uh, sometimes there is. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to switch to actual labs. What do you think? So in the big picture, these are this is just one of four panels that we use. And here we go. And so the reason I do so many labs is because I really need to have a, a cross-reference to different situations. No one lab is going to reveal something special. Um, so I need a cross-reference there. So we do CBC, liver panel, thyroid, omega panels. We do special tests, homocysteine, and so on and so forth. And that's not counting other panels that we do, such as uh, genomic analysis or hormone uh, analysis, which is a, a urine test, 24-hour urine test, or an intracellular micronutrient. All these things are very important to get a person's state of health. And some people go, when they look at even just this, this panel, he goes, this is a lot of labs. They go, I, I don't know if I want to get that many labs done. And other people go, I don't think I have this much blood. So um, this is fairly easy to do, and it is a long lab, and I do forewarn people. But the labs that I'm talking about today 
are, I've, re I've called them out, these are actual labs that we've done. We're just looking at these four labs, triglycerides, HDL, insulin, so fasting insulin, glucose, HDL, triglycerides. What will they tell us? So for $26, let's round it up, for $27, <laughs> for $26, what is it gonna tell you? Well, first off, the triglyceride and HDL ratio is really kind of a, almost a rule of thumb. If you have a ratio that's higher than 1.5, that's concerning. So we go across, and this is just to give you an example of all the people on this page anyway, that have come through our program, that two thirds by this one test so far, triglycerides over HDL were insulin resistance. But I don't rest on that. I need to have other confirmatory tests or formulas. And um, in this case, we'll just be adding other formulas for those same labs. So now we're gonna go to, let's take this one person here, a male 47. Um, we say, okay, triglycerides to HDL, they were, had some work, possibly insulin resistant. Now we're gonna go to what they call HOMA IR, which is insulin resistant. And it's a formula that has to do with your fasting insulin and your fasting glucose. So we run that. What do we get now? Well, anything above 1.4 is going to be a problem. So now we have a little confirmation of, well, the first test was problematic. The second test is 1.9. That's confirming the first result. And we'll go to that site in a second. And then the third one, we're gonna do what they call triglyceride glucose ratio. That's become pretty popular since uh, 2008 and become a lot of research in the last couple of years. So now we're just doing fasting triglycerides and fasting glucose. It's a formula you put that just like the one up here is a formula. So now we get a third confirmation that this particular person is certainly insulin resistant. But now let me show you something. If we were just to look at this person's glucose, you know, that's what most doctors take is just a glucose. He, would, he or she, the doctor, would have no idea about that insulin level. That insulin level is not super high, but it's out of my comfort range. And so I would say, ah, we're already getting into questionable territory. But if that doctor only took the fasting glucose at 109, and said, well, you know, it's a little high, just a little bit, you work on it and come back, see me in, you know, a year. Well, actually, this person is insulin resistant and it would not have been picked up on fasting glucose alone. It's very important. So in terms of the lifestyle of this person, we can guess there's probably a lot of processed foods. This person is not diabetic. They're probably pre-diabetic. Okay, so now we have, we're pretty comfortable with these four tests to say that yes, this person is insulin resistant. They do not have outrageous fatty liver disease, right? Because here is the range. On this last one, the triglyceride glucose ratio is that if it's over four, really four and a half, then it's insulin resistant. If it's over really eight and a half, I'm being gender neutral, eight and a half, then they have fatty, fatty liver disease. So we can see as we've gone through some of the people in our group, um, they all are insulin resistant and some clearly have fatty liver disease. Now what's stunning is that this is the first time these people have ever heard this information. And the reason we talk about insulin resistance, we talk about prediabetes and diabetes, for the most part, not counting, not talking about type one diabetes, it's a self-induced disease state. It's a self-induced metabolic problem you've given yourself. Not willfully, but as a culture, we've been misled to thinking we can eat all the carbohydrates we want, all the processed foods we want, and don't have to worry about anything else, and this is where it's led us. So if I'm the first person telling them there's an issue here, and by the way, if you have insulin resistance, let me tell you about all the things that are related to insulin resistance, various cancers, a cardiovascular disease, meaning you'll have a, um, a clogging of the heart, even a heart attack possibly, a, a myo, uh, an MI, a myocardial infarction, you'll possibly even have a stroke, a clot in the brain. So all these things are related. And now they start to listen.
So I've given them some information saying you might want to consider doing this. This is directly going to affect the rest of your life being, if you're 40, the next 60 years. If you're 60, the next four years, more or less. You see where I'm going? So I'm trying to give them some meaningful information that will cause them to take my recommendations more seriously that I'll go on to talk about. So there is the four tests, and this is how we go through, and it's, it's so impressive, you know? So if you were just to go through glucose right here only, all those black numbers are normal numbers. And for the most part, all the people who had normal, good glucose numbers did, did okay. Then we start throwing in the insulin, we go, actually, some of them had some insulin problems. Here's 5.9, there's some of 5.1. Some, look at this. Can you imagine you being the person who has 117 fasting glucose and your doctor said, you know, work on it, see me in a year. And then they come into our program or see me and I show them their insulin is 20. Their insulin is 20. Holy cow, that's diabetes. Technically, diabetes is just diagnosed by blood sugar levels. So I can't say that from this that he's diabetic, but he's certainly pre-diabetic, most likely, most likely diabetic. This person next to him is definitely diabetic. Look at the fasting glucose and the insulin. So just for four tests, you can really reveal a lot about metabolic health, about insulin resistance, about fatty liver disease. And so if the person's receptive to actionable information, this is about as actionable as you possibly can get. Let's go on. So this is what they call a triglyceride index. It's an online reference and there's no secret. It's not like I have any special access to it, but triglyceride index, you plug in your triglycerides and your glucose, fasting numbers, and they'll give you a relative number. So I go across and I simply do that. And if it's above uh, 8.5, you definitely have fatty liver disease. So it's amazing, right? So this is really in the last, well, in 2017, um, it started to be explored in 2008. Let's go on to, this is what they call HOMA IR, and this came from uh, a doctor in the UK. Pretty much the same thing. You put in the fasting glucose numbers, fasting insulin numbers, and it's gonna tell you if you're, uh, what your number is, and if your, um, and if your uh, insulin resistance per the HOMA IR. Let me flip to that for a second. So on the Homer RR, um, that was the website for that. And there again, it's not a secret, it's open to the public. You just plug in your numbers and away you go and you get an idea. So this is one of the three formulas, if you will, or just the three labs reusing some of the, those four tests that's going to show me if you have a problem. Are you insulin resistant? Do you even have fatty liver? The one about the triglycerides and the glucose, which is over here, this is not a better test. It will then go further to show if fatty liver disease is most likely. And the reason this is so amazing is because just on two numbers now, triglycerides and glucose, so that's what, a $6 test, seven under $10, that, and you can use this pretty much any place in the world, that you'll be able to tell a person that they are metabolically impaired and they can do something about that, and you can tell them why. That's it's phenomenal. Um, and here's the research on that. In case you have not heard of this before, the use of triglyceride glucose index. This is 2020. Uh, elevated TYG, they call it, predicts progression of coronary uh, arterial calcification. We could say also progression of coronary arterial disease, cardiovascular events, predictor of incident of colorectal cancer, um, the TYG associated with erectile dysfunction, makes sense. Um, sensitive marker for insulin resistance. That's pretty much why we're looking into this. Association of triglycerides and glucose. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention to say that, you know, there's just four tests you need to get. And now let me go to that site. So here is, here's where I go. Oh, I'll have to pop back in again. Here we go. So I use so this is our portal. You certainly don't have to use our portal at all. You can get your own, right? Um, and so you basically, you go look for these 
look for the tests. You know, you go to um, here, we do search, search tests, you put in triglycerides and whatever it is going to send, you can order it for yourself, right? And so what they'll do is they'll email you a blood requisition. So now the other thing is, well, how do you find out where to go? All right, we're going to go find location right over here. Find location. So we live in New Bern. Okay, now this tells me all the places and go. That's 13 and a half miles away. There's nothing really close. Here's one of those mobile phlebotomy centers I was telling you about. Oh, that's great if they want to come and do uh, do my blood draw, but I'll have to pay $80 for that. Whereas I don't have to pay if I want to go down to another town nearby or here's another town nearby. So you plug in whatever your address is and it will show you what are the centers. Um, you may have to call ahead, certainly during the times of COVID. I, I think all that's been suspended now, so you don't necessarily have to call. But I hope that you certainly believe, and, and better yet, I hope that you act on this, that you take this uh, seriously and you see that, you know, these are just four tests, $26 in total. And for most cases, as you've seen, that's including the phlebotomy fee, they will probably change your life. If you have good numbers on all this, you probably are pretty good. Um, you know, we're, we're now removed the big elephants in the room, and now we're just going to look at smaller things, assuming you have some issue that needs to be looked at. Okay, then. Well, that's a short video, and I hope you got something out of it. And if you do these labs, I would really love if you could post, say, hey, I got the labs done, and I'm doing fine, or whatever it is. You know, I, I'm trying to provoke you to take action on yourself and to do a little learning about this. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye.